It is so easy to make thousands and thousands of dollars in online poker. And if you're not doing it yet, you should be. And if you're making thousands, you should be making tens of thousands. If you're making tens of thousands, you should be making, you get it. GG Poker is probably the softest site I've ever come across in my 10 years in poker. It is wild how much they spend on marketing, which probably explains the ludicrously high rake, but it does really, it does make a difference given that on every table, there's like three or four recreational players, kind of bananas. If you look at my graph here, editor please, you'll see that I'm a red line grinder and you'll see over this, the course of these videos, I slowly passed Charlie, who's by the way is topless, shout out to the, the very hot summer in the U United Kingdom that just went. I, I work it out very slow and I'm like, what the heck? All of my, all of my bluffs are just working. Why are, they, why are all of them working? They shouldn't all be working. It can't be that good, but it's because so many people are just folding and folding and folding and folding. And so you need to know when to bluff, when to not bluff, when to give up. You know, you need you need to know when to have your give ups, your double barrels, fold them off this part of their range, but not the top of their range because you're exploiting the inelasticity of people's proclivities. There's an art to it, but there, there is also a science to it. And I have a couple of courses on it. I have a, I have a whole masterclass on this. And I, I also have a very, very short range analysis masterclass and where you can learn the science of how to bluff, how to value bet, and when to give up, when to get that red line just shooting up. And red line, for you all that don't know, it's like winning without showdown, so it's all of your bluffs, the, the ones that get through. And a lot of people, they usually have like break-even red lines, but if you could be the person that's battling in the small pots, getting the check raises through, getting the min bet bluffs through, getting the over bet on the turn through, and knowing why to do it and when to do it, you're gonna be head and shoulders above everyone else. So please don't just watch this. I'm here to teach. I'm not just playing 200 ml for the sake of it. I'm here to educate, I'm here to help. Try and note down like, oh, pause the video and I, oh, what would I have done before then? What, what would I have done? This is exactly how I turned $50 into millions of dollars. The only content I ever watched was Bankroll Challenge by Gripst, shout out to the GOAT. And I just watched them again and again and again and again. And I, I was thinking, I was taking notes. I was always thinking, how would I improve that? Like, why did he do that? How can I use that and implement it in a different spot? And if you're not doing that, and if you're not part of a community that's also doing that, shout out to Elite University, free to join the Discord, you're just missing out. And I, th what I've done is I've just created the exact path that I did to get to the point that I got to, where I made millions of dollars without a coach, without anything like this. All I did was watch these bankroll challenge videos and you can do it too. I mean, maybe not all of you can do it, but if you've got a talent for this game, you really can. And go and find out if you have the talent. Don't waste your time taking this, this hobby or this, this, this profession just half-assed. If, you, if you're gonna do something, you might as well do it properly. So pay attention. This is Papa Charlie, Teacher Charlie pointing a finger at you. Stop just dilly-dallying. Stop four-tabling without really thinking about it. Think about range analysis and if your autopilot is just not that strong, just reduce the amount of tables and start really, really paying attention and come up with lines off the table that you can then utilize on the table. I actually had this really funny, I'll get to the video in a second, but I had this really cool moment in a session a couple of days ago where I said, hey, try this line where you just flop the nut flush, you check or flop, min bet turn, and people just punt off. The next day, one of my students posts a hand being like, Charlie, what the heck is this magic? And the exact thing, he flopped nut flush, check or turn, check or flop, min bet turn, and the guy just blasts it in. And it's like, well, yeah, this is what happens when you prepare and then you're ready for the spots to come up. You don't have to try and think about it on the spot all the way through and you don't have to come up with these insanely creative ideas because you've already done the work. Anyway, rant over, enjoy the poker, make tons of money, go out there and get stack and shout out again. And I, I love you all. I really do deeply love you all. I'm going to be in Asia soon. So if any of you are in Asia, come say hi. All right, here with the type of hand we have, we just want to make sure that he definitely folds a 10. It's not the best triple barrel hand in the world, but it's a great double barrel hand. Good call six is it? Pretty loose recreational player in the small in the big blind. Not so bad. Um, go for a size that you can still reasonably cause ace kings and things like this. Great turn. It looks to him like he's picked up a gut shot to a straight, so he definitely don't want them to fold. For the rare case that five comes, it's the dream. 
this kind of turns our hand strength face up, this sizing. Um, he might fold us on like his jack anyway. Against a recreational player, I'll just check this back, see what happens. Might, might get some stabs. Give him the old tankle. Hmm, what to do, what to do, what to do. What to do, what to do, what to do. Okay. Uh, probably, probably valued it, but whatever. Pods and stuff. Whoa! Just saved ourselves. No, no, no. Saved ourselves the other 23 bigs, potentially. Uh, I should have three bit bigger here against a... It depends if he's a, a pro or not. Against a, a recreational player, it's fine. Against a pro, is way too small. It looks like he was a, a, a recreational player. A little bit big for these four. Here, this is a spot where a lot of people make a mistake of snap checking, uh, indicating you have some kind of showdown value, and then giving them more incentive to turn things like ace fucking 10 into a bluff or whatever. Welcome to Charlie's Artistic Inspirations. Now, at the same time as I got into spending a hell of a lot of time with some Hindu monks, I also got into stand-up comedy. And I ended up getting so much more spiritual nourishment from the stand-up comedy than I ever did from the monks. Uh, which was kind of, kind of funny and ironic at the same time. And the best form of stand-up comedy that I've ever watched is this show called Kill Tony. It is a kind of a live podcast, but it gives anybody the chance to sign up and they get one minute. A lot of people just bomb and it's cringy and it's painful, but it really gives you a tough, thick skin. But also some people are just fantastic and it sets them off on this journey where they end up then selling out theaters, becoming super rich. And it is just so funny and I wish more people were into it and it really helps people develop a good sense of humor. I watch it every single week with my wife. It's the only TV show that we watch. Go check out Kill Tony. I love it. Can go bigger here. This is gonna be on the smaller side against a professional. If he calls, it's gonna be a lot of like pocket eights, things like that. Calling out a small blind here against a Recreational player, snap checks back to turn. It makes me feel like he's got a jack a lot of the time. So we're just gonna get a call from a jack or a weak king. Could open this if there's the right configuration ahead of us, but there is not. And the question is, do we wanna try and make stuff that isn't an ace fold? We'll go for this then. If he's sitting there with King Jack, if he's sitting there with King Jack, he probably just fold flop. I'll just give up. There really aren't many combinations of flushes, to be fair. But when he bets, it's pretty. Two pair plus heavy, some flushes. So I'm just not gonna. I'm gonna bother. To honor the beautiful joining of two souls of me and Jungle Man at Elite University. Not only are we going to be making loads of strategy content and spiritual content and mindset content, you can also get a discount for the next. Let's say week and a half, you can get 20% off using the code jungle at eliteuniversity.com. Go check it out. He and I are creating something beautiful there. We're not the only people there. There are thousands of people in the community. Be a part of it. I'll see you there. Beautiful souls. See ya. 
Bruh, bruh, bruh. It's a bonus alert. It's a bonus alert. Jungle Man here to tell me why I'm the best in poker. Jungle Man, we're looking at the 6-5 suit at the, at the top. Tell me all of your thoughts. Pre-flop, uh, what frequency are you mixing this in? I like to throw at this hand 100% of the time, or nearly. I, I don't know if it really is against under the gun, but I, I, I like it. I feel like I should know, to be honest. Um, but you can't go too wrong with it, I can tell you that. Good. Me too. All right, sizing. You should actually bit bigger. I, I or, understand theoretically you should, but why? why? I, I think for real, for real, it should be a bit bigger because your range is stronger than his. You can eat, you can check raise too. That's like an option. Like this, this, this spot doesn't has like a bit of a mixed strategy. Like you can have tens and jacks and queens and all that. Like you, what I would do here probably would I would I would throw in a check raise at some point because this your your combo is such a rare combo that you can actually do this with. Um, so I'd maybe like. What, what you want to do, this is how game theory works, is you want to like throw in some like hands so it's like impossible for him to do anything back against you. And there's only so many trees where you can do that. And so if you like end up check raising with this hand, basically, like it's just one of the rare combos that you can actually pull that off and it's plus EV and helps your overall range. So what I would do is probably in this case, I would have bet a little bigger and I'll probably check raise all of them on the turn or something. I like it. There's more to that story also. If you bet, 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 flop, bet, turn, this puts, and you miss, that's a really shitty situation. However, the other two alternatives that are very good are you can bet, check, raise all in. That's better than uh, bet, check, bet, bet, give up, which you have other hands to do with anyway. Or you can bet, check, and bet the river, which is also better than the shit option of betting twice. You okay. see my logic? No, no, I love it. I love it. Um, so... I, 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 really really like the, like the check, I really like the check race turn line. Um, the line that I'm going for here is the bet bet and then decide if we want to shove river. And the reason I'm going smaller is because we know that this hand, or assuming I'm going to take that line, we know this is going to be a very profitable double barrel. So I want him to peel kind of wide on the flop. You know, I, I want him to never fold any ace high and, and like king highs even. I want them all to be in there because I, I'm then going to have more hands that I'm going to get value from because they're going to fold the turn the vast majority of the time. And even um, if it's completely fine. Uh, I don't know if that applies here. Sometimes that's good, but I don't know if it applies in this spot too much. I'm going to... Uh... I, th I think he's going to be quite, quite nose, elastic with his, with his with his cool flop range. I think when we go this size as opposed to like even a third, I think there's going to be a bunch more hands that are going to call. The, I mean, that's true, dude. But like the problem is he has a lot of those hands to call with anyway. I don't think you really gain that much by doing that. But I'm not 100% sure. That's why I'm writing it down. If that's a vi more viable option. My instinct says it's not. Okay, there. No, I would still check raise the turn here. Like what the f***? Yeah, what other yeah. hand are you going to do with? What kind, what kind of value hands do you want to be check raising here? This, feel, this feels like a tiny king, one, dude. triple an awful lot. It's the set of, well, I guess you can have a set of eights. Um, Aces. Just, oh, wait. Here we go. I do have a note here. All right. Let me look at my notes. I'm going to be a good student here because I know I'm not a good student by nature, but I realize this, why it's good. Uh, so I'm going to take a note on, on the hand. Um, okay. So, yeah. Aces is pretty good to check or his turn here with. A aces and maybe eights if we three bet eights, which I don't. Um, and then aces uh, yeah. sometimes also want to check flop and yeah, it, it just it just feels like to me you just want to like most of your value hands here just want to triple off. I mean, you could do it with kings, I guess, like or or king eight or something like that, um, because you the board a little bit crippled. It's, it's a reasonable, reasonable line. Anyway, play the hand, see what you do. So here I'm just I'm going to size that I'm targeting. I went up here because I'm targeting his pocket pairs. Yeah, well, he blocked the pocket pairs. I think he's going to call the turn. He's pro there's a decent chance he calls the turn. He doesn't call fives and sixes 100 percent of the time pre flop. So. Uh, you know what I want to check here? I want to. I think actually he should fold tens on the turn. It, it's yeah. uh, it. I, I I used to never fold tens here, but thinking about it more, maybe it's a fold. I I don't know because like you could theoretically have tens. I guess part of the problem. Yeah. And we're we're kind of we're we're very very polar using this size. Like we're not we're not value betting even like jacks for this size probably. When we went so small on the flop, especially because he, he's gonna have more king x. I'm folding that. I'm folding tens there pretty pretty exploitatively sometimes against some people, but against other people, I'm gonna be calling all of my pocket pairs, knowing that so many people have a bet bet and then give up line because it just looks like they have just all their combos of ace king and like other things. And so a lot of people end up like over double barreling the turn and then under bluffing the river 
So when you're when you're faced with this uh, kind of annoying spot in the river where it's like, yeah, we kind of don't, don't really block clubs because he doesn't really turn up with the five or six. You're clubs, supposed you know? to chuck full. Yeah. Why, I think. Why, why is that? Let me think about this a little bit more. I think it's I think it's reasonable to bluff actually. I feel it feels um, to me like it's a bluff, theoretically. But I, I, I think I think this is like I think this is like close to the uh I think it's one of the worst bluffs if I had to guess. It's probably like break even at best if you jam. Why why do you think it's one of the worst bluffs? Because you don't block a lot of his kings. I'm trying to think of what's a worse bluff, and I'm struggling here because you actually benefit by yeah. having higher clubs. If you have an ace of clubs, it's a pretty bad bluff. Terrible bluff, yeah. Um, but exploitatively, I think in this spot, all I want to do is just make a decision like, okay, do I think that he's going to call his pocket pairs on the turn or do I not? And if I think he's going to call you know his what? pocket pairs on I'm the gonna turn, I'm going to look this one up. I'm um, going to look this one up because maybe it's better than I think. And if he and if he folds his pocket pairs on the turn, this is a disastrous. In fact, it's disastrous to bluff anything on the river if he folds his pocket pairs. Um, uh, I, I don't know if he's supposed to fold or not on a turn with like two jacks. I, it I doesn't matter what he's he... supposed to. It's just what we think he'll do. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's see what you do. You probably shove. Yeah, I shove. He folds. Like a. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, and uh, yeah, I, I'd like to do one of these per week, just like one one hand, and give people a little uh, example of like theoretical game, Silverlands jungle creative mind versus uh, versus mine. Okay. I'm actually gonna show that. The no snaps good. It means he's got queens or king queen maybe. King, queen, heart, something like that. Uh, here we're definitely gonna go for a check on the river. Very nice. The the problem is sometimes sometimes we get snapped there, and sometimes we get um, tangled. I hear it called. Uh, so it's like all parts of their range are potentially calling, <laughs> slash definitely calling. It's quite often not good. That being said, I changed my mind. I thought we were, they were going to be more uh, more tank folds, combos wise, than I first give them credit for. Here we're, we're targeting all the two pairs, maybe some f***ing ace queens inside to hero call 10. Nice. Yeah, two pair. Bonus alert, bonus alert, hand breakdown, bonus alert. As Topless Charlie, apologies for that, it was very hot in the summer of England. As Topless Charlie is so finely showing in this ace king hand as he continuation bets into three people, going a small size here is mandatory. In fact, what you need to be doing is understanding this very fine concept SPR, stack to pot ratio. If our opponent happens to have king queen, we're going to get all of the money anyway. So the only play to make here is to maximize money against our opponent's other hands. Now we have at least one recreational player in the pot. It looks like probably two because the big blind's playing 44% VPIP. So by going small, not only are we maximizing versus something like queens, jacks, tens, maybe something else random. Because they're a recreational player, they might just randomly bluff seeing small as weak. So if you're going for a big size here, I understand that you want to maximize value against these king, queens, and king, jacks of the world. But trust me, the SPR means that you're going to get the money anyway. So we're going to bet 6.4 into a pot of 30.8. Let me know what you would have done. Now we get a call from our opponent and we have to put him on a range here. Obviously the four isn't the best. We now chop with all of the other King X, but it does mean that we have a pretty easy decision. Do we want to either target Queens, Jacks, Tens, etc., with a bet, or do we want to allow him to bet himself potentially with a float or a bluff, or maybe want to go for a delayed check turn bet river because you think that makes it more look, look more bluffy? Essentially, all you're trying to do is maximize value from two categories of hands that is a worse full house or a potential float. Now, in this situation, I think it's much better to go for a check. And in this exact situation, he decides to check back as well. So what are we going to do on the river? Well, there's not really too much to get value from here. There are potential random floats like Ace-Queen. 
And then there's also hands like Queens and Jacks. And you could definitely size up a little bit here to get called some Queens and Jacks from a recreational player who looks like, oh, I've got a full house. What, how can I fold for quarter pot? Or you could do what I did here, which is go 10% pot, hoping that maybe something like Ace Queen will turn itself into a bluff or that he will just call with any worse full house 100% of the time. And lo and behold, rabbit life. He is uh, the true bunny, as Tony G says. That's, how he, that's what he calls fish. And he goes for the raise. And look at what he turns up with. Oh, I didn't I didn't think that was, that was a possibility, to be honest. <laughs> I'll be real with you. Didn't think that was going to be a thing. We have kings, so we'll go bigger. Worth knowing this play, guy's playing 12% so far, so there's actually, this board hits some pretty f***ing hard. Like the Queen Jacks and 10Xs of the world. That turn hits him pretty hard too. Max value or losing more, losing more than we should. <laughs> I, li I like the min down the river though. Just give given his timing, I think it's a, it's a good one. Um, yeah, because a decent percentage of the time, Ace X will consider raising turn. Or leading river or something like that. So we're only just snap calls turn, snap checks river. Against the min bet, it's going to be a lot more 10x slash king queens of the world than it is going to be uh, a6. If he raised the river, then we'd be in a predicament and I'd probably just fold it. Alright, this is a fold against regs, against uh, recreational player, we can call it. He's going to be CB in this probably 100%, so we're going to be check raising him. The fact that he's earlier position makes it worse of a check raise in comparison to if he's button, because he's going to have more pocket pairs in his range as well as the King X. Um, but still against 100% CB. And so uh, it's just a little bit too juicy. Welcome to Product Epiphany, where I give you an epiphany about products. I spent tens of thousands of dollars and many, many years on nutrition, and I have spoken to some of the best minds in the world, and I've delved so far into it, you wouldn't believe it. One of the things I've learned is that seed oils really suck, and also dairy and the way that it's processed at the moment really sucks. So what I like to drink is oat milk, but like 99% of the oat milks out there have some kind of like sunflower oil in them, and it messes up your guts it's an inflammatory thing so what i really like is this plenish oat milk it tastes fantastic you can drink it by itself you can drink with porridge cereal whatever you want to do try it out i have probably like 20 cartons of it again downstairs and again this isn't a paid advertisement i just love to share stuff and i hope it helps it's gorgeously tasty enjoy oh that was a misclick <laughs> Uh, so this, this guy's a professional and I've now 3X'd him out of position. So got, got to know that he's still going to have orders like ace three officer. Uh, so there's actually going to be a lot more like ace of spades type hands. Don't want to go too big. I think something like this would be good. Checking's also completely fine in this spot. I think... I think we're gonna do that. Get a call from some like sixes sometimes. Uh, we're gonna get some raises. I don't think he's gonna bluff raise very often. That's the thing, but he, we are gonna get raises from Valley Hands, 10 8 offsuit. So it's a good it's a good call preflop. <laughs> we, we somehow got like way more than the max value <laughs> by misclicking pre. 
but he he was he's definitely medical there against that size. Uh, let's go in. Let's follow this. I should keep in mind that he's gonna have a note that I that I did that. <laughs> Definitely checking turn, checking this one down. Every now and again we win. Never mind. Have to call. Nice. There's a spot where he's going to continue bluffing, just because it looks like we can have Ace King in his in his mind. And his Queen plus his Red Aggression player that was had a little cold thing next to his name. Went for a three bet there. Um, sometimes it's air, sometimes it's a set, and sometimes it's uh, some like sevens on the six four deuce. Uh, so against the air and the sevens, we can still win the pot. And it's, it's not easy to have a set. And I've got to go drop off my mum at not quite the airport, but near an airport for a convention. Some kind of trauma healing thing that she's learning. Or it might be marketing. I think it's marketing this one. <clears throat> so if we got any funky hands in between now and then. Uh, probably going to use this as a four bet. As you may have seen on my last video, people over three bet this spot. No, people don't over four bet this spot. So, so that'll be. Uh, we will open this as well with one recreational player, two recreational players, one big in the big blind. This man has chosen death. Very fortunate. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, how do I skip? I'm not that interested in it. <laughs> oh no, I can't skip. How do I skip? <laughs> ah! I don't like that. See that these boards small all the time. It's so good. Okay, I guess we're just forced to watch this then. Huh? check out the discord it's fantastic the stuff that's happening over there it's free and uh yeah link in the description